Hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you for watching this video. Today I've got another Cinema 4D tutorial for you guys and we're going to be looking at the cloth eye tags again. And if you may have watched my last video, I was kind of explaining uh, about the cloth eye that it's there and what it does, etc. As opposed to kind of how to use it and how to make it look good. Uh, so that's kind of what's going to be today. Uh, that's going to be what today's tutorial is going to be on, uh, how to kind of use it and make it look good. Uh, so I think without further ado, we'll get started. Now, obviously, I'm going to stick to this, stick to my guns, and go to the plane again. And I'm just going to enlarge it so it takes up a larger surface area for the cube that I'm about to create to fall in. And our cube's obviously nice and simple. And I'm just going to drag it up to the point where I want it to drop. And I don't want it to land straight on the face, on the bottom surface, which you're going to be doing now. So I'm just going to rotate it. So you just go to the rotate tool and, you know, kind of make it random. It doesn't so much matter. And that's looking good. That's looking fine for me anyway. And obviously you want to increase the segments on the cube just so it doesn't, not a bog standard shape. So it doesn't, all the surfaces don't move over each other. So three and three works good for me uh, on, all, on all the properties anyway. And that's looking good. Uh, obviously, you need to make the, both the cube and the plane into polygons. So to do this, select them both in the object manager. Hit C on your keyboard uh, for both. And we're going to add a cloth eye tag to both of them. However, on the plane, we're going to go to tags, cloth eye, and collider. And under cube, we're going to go to tags, cloth eye, and cloth. Uh, so now just hit play. And we should get a similar effect to what we created in the last tutorial. Yeah, there we go. We've got a cube kind of bouncing off the floor and it kind of flips over on itself. And again, it's, it seems like jelly, uh, if you will. However, this is very bog standard, you know. Uh, when it actually hits, it's kind of bad quality and you kind of see uh, a lot of the points extruded and flat surfaces. And you want it to be smooth. Uh, so if you just add a hypernerbs, drag the cube into the hypernerbs. As a ch oh, there we go. As a child of the hypernerbs. And you see that it kind of makes it more into kind of a blob as opposed to anything and this creates a soft look makes it look more sleek and it kind of justifies kind of the look that we're creating we don't want a hard something hard sharp uh, to be kind of bouncing and looking like jelly you want it to be soft and so hypernerves really brings that out and you notice if you kind of hit it and play it doesn't so much break it, it doesn't resemble the blob as such it kind of just bounces off hard doesn't really lose its shape uh, so we're just going to mess with the uh, stiffness of it and it kind of hurts me to say that anyway uh, lower the stiffness down from 100% to something like 30 and obviously mess about with it as you will depending on what look you're trying to create yeah, so go ahead and click play and you see that looks quite good it's more like jelly uh, maybe a bit soft as you notice the point in the middle there it kind of went over on itself so I'll create a change to 40 crank it up a little bit and take another look and that's looking a lot better and that gives a really nice effect and so you see the hypernerbs kind of brings it out. Uh, I'll just drag it out now. Uh, you see, and click play. That's what it looked like. And I'll go ahead and try and pause it at the right time. You see that it's kind of all sharp edges and it just looks uneven. And if you try and use this in an animation, you know, look kind of horrid, for example, if you render it, all the sides will be all dodgy. And that's the effect of what the hypernerb does, you know. It's very good in what. If I manage to drag it in, there we go. And that's all and well. And so with this kind of look, we're going for a soft look. You don't want it to be too glossy. Uh, you don't want it to be like really metallic because it's kind of like a blob. Uh, however, if you have a look at substances, they kind of do have a little bit of shine on them. Uh, however, it kind of has its original kind of density. Uh, so we're just going to make a new material. Um, and we're going to bring up the properties material editor, rather. Uh, go right click and edit. And under color, I'm going to change it to a nice uh, creamy color. So just go to the yellow and drag it in a lot. Uh, something that looks good for you. That looks okay for me. And I'll go to the reflection. And obviously I'll drag it down um, a lot. Uh, it's very little. Something like 5% around there. Uh, change as you wish. And under the texture, I'm going to add a Fresnel. Obviously Fresnel creates a more realistic kind of uh, shine. And also again, I'm going to tone this down a lot. to something about 20 about 20% looks good and obviously you need to apply that to the to the blob and if I zoom out and I take a quick look uh, you see that it's starting to look, you've got the shine, you've got the shadows and that's with a very little render settings so we're going to go to render settings now and I'm just going to add a global illumination and an ambient occlusion 
when I decide to do that. Uh, Global illumination, I'm going to change it to low just for the render purposes. Uh, low and low. Uh, shut up, cat. Uh, ambient occlusion, uh, contrast. I'm going to change this up to about 20%. Uh, global illumination, I'm going to leave on low. Obviously, for this to work, the global illumination, you need to add a light. Uh, so I'm just going to add in a few lights. Now I'm going to add one, an aerial light above. Uh, I'm going to add one light kind of to the side so you can kind of see in the gap here. Uh, see, I'm going to tone down the intensity a lot. And if we just take a quick render look, uh, you see that it should look quite nice. And this will give a good effect. This will look a lot better than the original. Uh, with the cloth side, it, 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 there's a lot of possibilities of what you can do. You know, you can do it with anything uh, as long as you've got it in its kind of polygon form. And so as you see, that's looking quite nice. And you can use this with all different shapes, obviously. Um, it's all down to you. Uh, but that's all from this tutorial. If you want kind of further things, uh, post in the comment section below and um, I'll get to that. Uh, that's all from me. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I've been Conor Chrome Designs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.